Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at using Maven from the command line. Uh, this video is uh, part of um, a series of videos on Spring Framework. And this is kind of an optional video. I just wanted to include this so that you can get a better feel for how Maven works. But usually we're going to be using Maven from within Eclipse and you don't need to know how to use it from the command line. So don't worry if, uh, if you don't want to install Maven and follow this through, then it's fine not to. You'll, you'll still understand the rest of the tutorial. But it's, uh, it's a good idea to watch this video just to help you understand Maven a bit more if you want to do spring programming and assuming you don't know Maven already. So um, Maven is cross-platform. I'm actually on uh, the Mac here and the Mac operating system is a kind of Unix type operating system. So some of the commands that I'll type will be uh, Unix commands here and you'd have to do something slightly different on uh, Windows, although the, the Maven commands, of course, will all be the same on any platform. I'm in a folder here, uh, in a folder that I created called temp, and I've installed Maven and added the Maven uh, directory, program folder uh, directory, to my um, path environment variable. If that sounds like gobbledygook, don't worry, because as I say, you don't really need to know it. But um, if, if you've been programming a long time, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, adding programs to your path and stuff like that. And that means that basically I can type NV MVN, which is the Maven program, and get a response from the Maven program. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's just clear this, I'm going to type MVN space. And this is, this is a oddly verbose command, but this is how it is. I'm going to type archetype, which is also not an easy word, to spell really, but archetype colon generate, like that, generate, and hit return. And what I get is a, um, you have to be connected to the internet for this because as far as I know, this is actually con connecting to the internet. And what we get is a massive list of archetypes. And as we saw in the last tutorial, uh, Maven archetypes are templates for projects, which also include dependencies which uh, ultimately resol resolve to jar files that Maven will download automatically to build your project. And you see here, in fact, that, um, that Maven is suggesting that by default, if I, if I don't type a archetype number here, and if I don't type some text which would filter this list of archetypes, if I just hit return, then the default that I'll get is archetype number 280. If you're on, if you're doing this on Windows, probably this will or kind of just scroll straight out of your console. Um, but on on this Unix type terminal, I'm able to scroll up, and um, I can see that uh, 280 here is is uh, this Maven archetype quick start, which is an archetype which contains a sample Maven project. So this is just a really simple, basic. Java Maven project. Um, so I'm going to just accept the default here. I'm going to hit return and it wants me to choose a, a version number of that quick start template. So I'll hit return to accept the default. And now I need to provide a group ID for my own project. And this is a, just a Java package name. So I'll make up, just as in the last tutorial, I'll make something up. I'll say com.caveofprogramming dot uh, spring dot test and now I need an artifact ID which as we saw in the last video is the the identifier of this particular project that I'm going to create so let's just call this um, I'll call it test one or something like that that'll do in the version I'll accept the default and hit return and the package it's suggesting my group ID for the package and that's good for me so and this is a package that it will put my code into. So I'll hit return and uh, it's asking me, yes, do I want to go ahead? So I'll hit return and there we go. Now it's, um, if we do um, ls here, uh, this is a Unix command, we can see it's created this test one folder. So it's used the artifact ID to create a folder. And uh, you could look at that with Explorer on Windows or Finder on the Mac. And uh, since I'm in a terminal, I'll, I'll just, on a Unix system, I'll just do find dot, and that will show me the 
folder structure. So um, we can see here that um, as in the last tutorial, I've got the same code again. I've got an app.java here and I've got a JUnit test, app test here. And there's also this pom.xml that contains my list of dependencies. And if you uh, wanted to add dependencies to this project from the command line, you could search um, the Maven website, just do a bit of Googling to, to find the Maven repository website. I think it's search.maven.org or something like that. And you could edit this pom.xml by hand to add dependencies and then um, build the project. And Maven would download the jar files you uh, selected. And at the moment, let's just do more on this. So I'll copy that. And you could look at this in Notepad or something on Windows if you wanted. But here we, here we see that we've got one dependency here, which is the JUnit jar that's needed because this archetype includes JUnit tests. So now, um, by the way, if, if you're doing this for the first time, the stuff that I'm showing you will take longer because Maven will download stuff from the internet. That's, that's half the point of it. Um, it's only so quick when I do it because this is not the first time that I've done this. So now let's go into test one, CD test one, and I'm going to type maven uh, compile and hit return. And at this point, it will uh, download any necessary jars if it has to. I think it also runs the JUnit tests at this point by default, but in any case, everything's completely fine. It says success. And uh, if I do find dot now, we'll see that it's generated a, it's compiled my Java code, the Java code that it created itself actually into a class. And of course you can, the point is that you can use this as a template for your own project. So you can merrily add Java files as well as adding dependencies, edit this file and, and so on. Um, the idea is that this is just a basic template to get you started with your project. And now let's, let's go to the target folder and let's go to classes and just run this app.class just for the hell of it. So I'll say java com dot cave of programming dot spring dot test dot app. And there we go, it says hello world. So there's there's loads more stuff that Maven can do. Like you can package your code using Maven, although you have to um you'd have to define like uh main class in your pom.xml, I think. And uh, you could also deploy using Maven, which means, in this case, deploy, send the archetype to the Maven website, as far as I know. I've never felt the need to do that, but it's possible, I believe. But um, what I'm going to be using Maven for in this course is, is really just getting jars. So um, we're not going to need to know any more about Maven. That's, that's the whole thing. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to keep repeating for the first few videos. This, this is the free video that's part of a bigger course and you can find the link to the complete course in the description of the video on YouTube below the video. And uh, you can find my latest videos at caveofprogramming.com. In the next video in this series, we're going to actually go ahead and create a basic spring program, which is going to be very exciting. So join me again next time and until next time, happy coding.